Hello, it's Pibble Pusher, and today I'd like to show you how to make these glowing braziers. So I made these for my work throne room build. As far as I'm aware, I came up with the design, and I'm really excited to show you. For this build, you're going to need a CR2016 battery, a piece of XPS foam that is a little wider and a little longer than your battery, but just barely as deep, even maybe a little bit shorter, a piece of foam that is as long and as wide as the first, but wafer thin, and then a block of foam to make your fireball out of. You're also going to need a LED diode. You can buy these on Amazon or you can just cannibalize a dollar store tea light. And then from there, it's just your basic X-Acto knife, hot glue gun, Mod Podge, paint, paint brushes, sandpaper, and electrical tape, which is very handy for this particular project. So the first thing we're going to do is make our fire bowl out of our foam cube. We're going to do this by starting with an X-Acto knife and cutting all the corners off and continuing to cut off any sharper angles until we have a round-ish shape. Then we're going to use sandpaper to take any remaining edges and angles off and try to just get a really smooth, continual bowl shape. Next, we need to do the inside of our bowl. So we're going to cut a circle around the outside. You want to leave enough for a you know, substantial outer lip to your bowl. And then create a star pattern through the middle with your knife. With each cut, you want to go as deep as you can without coming out the other side of your foam. Err on the side of caution. You can always make it deeper, but you can't really uncut it. From there, we can use the tip of our knife to pry out each triangle and end up with a hollowed out bowl. And here's an example of the kind of bowl we might wind up with. Now that we've got our bowl sorted, we need to make the base for it to go on. So we're going to get that thicker piece of square XPS foam, place our battery in the center, and mark the battery edges. From there, you're going to carve out around where the battery would sit, leave a little bit of room to work with, so you want to cut out the corners, and you're cutting right the way through so that you end up with a bit of a picture frame situation. Confirm that your battery fits nicely in its little box, and then when you're ready, hot glue around the edge of your frame and press the wafer thin piece to the top. Don't sweat it if it's not perfectly lined up. You can always carve it or work that into the final design. So now we're getting to the really fiddly part of this project. You're gonna get your diode and you're gonna stab it through the bottom of your bowl. Your goal is to have it stand straight up when you're done, so try to get as centered as possible. Then you're gonna take the whole thing and stab it again through the top of your platform through that wafer thin piece. As the prongs stick out through the bottom, you might notice that one's a little longer than the other. And if so, you're gonna start with the shorter one and you're gonna use, hopefully if you have them, a pair of needle nose pliers, you can use your fingers, but it's extremely fiddly. I recommend having some kind of tool. And you're gonna bend your piece to be parallel to the base of your, um, your wafer piece. I found it worked best to fold the end of this wire into an L shape that is flat against the bottom of your platform. Then you're gonna get the opposite wire, the longer prong, and fold it in the opposite direction, still flat against your platform, and then fold out the very tip of that into another L but facing directly towards you. You're going to be very gentle with this because your piece is very delicate at this stage. The key to making this project work is electrical tape. So we're going to get a small piece and we're going to tape off about half our battery. Now one side of your battery is going to be perfectly smooth and have sharper edges. You want the opposite side that has a bit of almost like trim to it. That side should always be facing up in this project. And now you can test it and put it against your wires and see if you can make it glow. If you can't, you need to do some fiddling, unfortunately, until it works consistently. The piece that faces down, the piece of wire that points down towards you, is going to be the trick here. You want it to touch the edge of your battery. So when I recorded this, I wasn't exactly sure how to explain this, so I've made a very official diagram. Um, basically, 
each wire needs to be touching a different side of the battery without touching the other side first. This is easy with the piece of wire that's going to be touching the upward side of the battery. That's just our short wire, we bent it in a little L, it's going to make contact with the top side of the battery, no problem. The long probe, however, we're going to need to bend so that it touches the edge, which it counts as the other side. Our electrical tape needs to be on the side that the long probe is on to stop it from touching the closer side first. Hopefully that clears it up. Maybe someone else can explain it better in the comments, but this was the best way I could figure out. To make the flame, you want to get a hot glue gun and basically make a glue swirly, being careful not to burn the edges of your bowl. I found it worked best to make your basic swirl, then let it dry, and then go over it with just the tip without pushing for any glue, and kind of dragging to get a bit more of a texture and a bit more of a shape to it. As desired, use a ballpoint pen to put in some patterning. I just did bricks around my edge, and then you're good to put your layer of Mod Podge, paint, and dry brush to get your end result. From there, you should be able to pretty reliably place it on your battery to get a consistent light. And now you've got a great light up element to add some ambiance to your game. For the written out version of this, check out pibblepusher.ca. And until next time, happy crafting!